The Masonic Order of Athelstan has a long association with All Saints Church at Kingston upon Thames. This is a natural connection due to our shared bond with King Athelstan the Glorious. The formation of the King Athelstan Memorial Foundation has allowed our order to further assist All Saints Church to enhance and preserve the memory and legacy of King Athelstan. We have joined Father Jonathan Wilkes, the All Saints team and the wider community of Kingston in one of the most important projects to date to achieve this mutual goal. Let us first look at All Saints Church through the eyes of those who know it best. Welcome to All Saints Kingston-upon-Thames. My name is Angelica Bell. I live here in Kingston and both my children were baptised in this historic church. All Saints has so many secrets to tell about Kingston and the people who've lived here, but its significance goes further than that. It is the birthplace of the country we know as England and witnessed the crowning of our very first English king. In the Middle Ages, the, the church would have been full of colour and, and noise. This was a place that people came to have parties, to have meetings, to have markets, to come and buy and sell things, because it was the largest and driest space in the town centre. In the medieval period, All Saints would have been a riot of colours with the introduction of beautiful stained glass windows. The walls would have been brightly decorated with wall hangings and paintings everywhere. This is one of the oldest surviving paintings in the church and is about 600 years old. It depicts Saint Blaise, the patron saint of woolcombers. You can just see that he's carrying a woolcomb, the instrument used to torture him to death. Paintings like this would have been everywhere in the 1400s. The walls would have been like an enormous storybook, a tapestry of colour. The first kings who can be regarded as kings of England were crowned on or near the site of All Saints Church in Kingston upon Thames. Seven kings are traditionally identified as having been crowned here from the son of Alfred the Great, Edward the Elder in 900, to Ethelred in 978. Athelstan, the first king to rule over the land that we now call England, was crowned here on the 4th of September 925. Instantly recognisable, the Bayard Tapestry is in fact not a tapestry at all, but is an embroidery. Tapestries are generally made with long strips of material that are pushed through the canvas or backing to form the image. It depicts the events of the final Viking conquest of Britain, some 127 years after King Athelstan's death, which in many historians' eyes marks the end of the Anglo-Saxon period. An embroidery is produced by the finest quality stitching and the expert work of the seamstresses, commonly referred to as broderers. Their skill was honed by thousands of hours of intricate needlework necessary to produce just a small fragment of the overall work. Here we see a modern broderer at work and we can only admire the patience demonstrated in the completion of this very intricate work. Other marvellous examples of ancient embroideries are the 12th century embroideries that include the steeple Aston Cope, the Life of the Virgin Panels, the Butler Bowden Chasuble, the Tree of Jesse Cope, which formed part of the 2017 Opus Anglicanum exhibition at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. But of course, the most meaningful to us are the stole, maniple and girdle housed at Durham Cathedral. These are recorded as being given to the Shrine of St Cuthbert by King Athelstan when he visited Chesley Street in 934 AD. These are some of the finest 
surviving examples of Anglo-Saxon embroidery in England and predate the Bayeux tapestry by some 135 years, incredibly making them over 1,080 years of age. As we have seen, embroideries and tapestries have been used to decorate luxury textiles for over a thousand years, whether as symbols of power, or to tell a story, or indeed to enforce a message. In invoking this tradition, the All Saints Kingston First Kings Embroidery Appeal has been launched. All Saints Church aims to tell the story of each of the seven kings using both the visual impact of each embroidery and a related narrative. They will be used to inform and raise awareness of this important local and national heritage to both adults and school groups alike. Additionally, visitors will be encouraged to learn about the skills needed and the techniques used to produce the embroideries. There will be a hands-on display of the different materials used and an explanation of the embroidery and conservation methods employed. Building on some inspiring ideas by Sophia Pearson, who won the All Saints National Competition for the initial designs, the panels will be created by award-winning embroiderer Jackie Puzzi. Jackie's speciality of combining machine embroidery, hand finishing and beading will present the images in keeping with the reordered building design of All Saints Church. Her expertise and talent for strong, colourful and strikingly visual concepts make her the ideal broderer for this project. The embroideries will hang within All Saints Church on the east wall and will be specially framed, giving them a life expectancy of many hundreds of years. This area is a well-used community space and the embroidery panels will offer an invaluable and unique learning resource for visitors of all backgrounds and ages. The visual impact of the Seven Kings on the east wall of the church will be impressive and will be enjoyed by many future generations. The King Athelstan Memorial Foundation has already commissioned the embroidery on behalf of the members of the Masonic Order of Athelstan. The panel depicting Athelstan the Glorious, first King of England, will be panel number two. Wonderful news is that this embroidery has already been produced and completed. This has also assisted All Saints in obtaining the necessary permissions for artwork of this kind in a Grade 1 listed building. It is now framed and will be hung in time for the launch of the All Saints Appeal on the 4th of September 2020, the 1095th anniversary of King Athelstan's coronation.